For you are worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We do not own the rights to this music. Hallelujah. Again, we do not own the rights to this music. Hallelujah. We thank God for the writer of these lyrics. Hallelujah. God truly will make a way. Hallelujah. Anybody know that God will make a way? Do you believe yes. that today? Hallelujah. Yes, He'll make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you couldn't see your way, God stepped in on time and he made a way for you. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless your name, Jesus. He will make a way. Do you believe that today? Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. If you believe it, come on, lift your hands in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in the house if you believe it today. Hallelujah. If you're on Facebook watching, hallelujah. Wave your hands if you believe that God will make a way. Hallelujah. Has he done it for you? Hallelujah. I testify today that he has done it for me time and time and time again. Hallelujah. When I didn't know how a situation was going to work out, all I knew is I needed help. I needed God to come in and save me. I needed something to happen. I needed some movement to take place. Hallelujah. And God always came through, always. He never just left me hanging there. Lord, I bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And every time he showed up and I find myself in a situation again because of the first time or the second time he came through, I knew that he was going to come through again. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Yes, he is. Way maker. He's a way maker. Yes, he is. Maker, I know. Yes. Hallelujah. He can and he will. Lord, I bless your name, Jesus. Lord, I bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to lift you up, Jesus. We come to magnify your name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, hallelujah. And as we go before the throne, Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for life, health, and strength, a reasonable portion of strength, hallelujah, of health, hallelujah. Oh God, we know that some people are worse off than we are, hallelujah. There's somebody who couldn't walk today, who couldn't talk today, hallelujah, who's aching and racking and pain in their bodies, oh God. But Lord God, we thank you for our position. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We, we thank you for our status. It may not be a perfect status, but it's better than what some people have. Lord, we thank you. Thank you in this situation that I'm in. Hallelujah. Could always be worse. But Lord, I thank you. I praise your name, Lord God. Have your way in this service, Lord God. Let your will be done. Hallelujah. Continue to call me to prayer, Lord God. Hallelujah. Continue calling me into fellowship with you, Lord God. Hallelujah. I understand, Lord God, that you want to sometimes commune with us. Hallelujah. Lord God, we just honor you today. We bless your holy name, Lord God. Bless this service. Bless the messenger. We know the message is already blessed. But Lord God, use them as only you can, Lord God. And let the word penetrate our hearts. Let it be changing. Hallelujah for our souls, Lord God, so that we can be refueled, renewed, re-strengthened in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God, we pray for those who are suffering in states where, hallelujah, the hurricanes came, Lord, and yes, God. people have passed on. Lord God, we pray for those families that are grieving the loss of their loved ones. Hallelujah. Not only that, but Lord God, loss, period, death, period. Hallelujah. We pray for those who remain and have to, hallelujah, grieve and hallelujah, go through the process of sorrow, Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. 
Lord God. Give them purpose and destiny, Lord God. Let them walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we'll be so careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. We love you today. In your precious name we pray. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read a scripture today, Lord God, coming from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. It says, Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing, hallelujah, and persistent in prayer. Let me read that again. It says, be unceasing, that means never stop and persistent hallelujah even when you don't feel like it you have to push hallelujah in prayer it says in every situation no matter what the circumstances be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Any prayer warriors in the house? Hallelujah. Any prayer warriors on Facebook watching? Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that you got to pray without ceasing. Even when you don't feel like it, when you're tired and worn out, you still got to pray. Even if you've prayed and prayed and prayed, keep praying. Hallelujah. I think that oftentimes that we have reduced prayer to just wanting and asking of God. And that's okay in its place because we do find ourselves in need. But that's not what prayer is only for. Prayer is also about getting in his presence. Spending time with him because if we enter into his presence, God can fix our situations that way also. He can change our minds, our attitudes just through prayer. You know, we take things to prayer and we're asking God, fix him, fix her, fix them. Hallelujah. But if we enter into his presence through prayer, he can fix us. He can fix our hearts, our minds, and give us a different perspective of the situation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that it's all, not always about coming to him and asking. But it's also about spending quality time with him and getting in his presence. Lord, we honor you today and we thank you for your holy presence. Hallelujah. It's the best place to be. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks and honor in your precious name. Our pastor is going to come forth. Hallelujah. Take us further into this service. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We don't own the rights to this music. Amen. We thank God for the devotion today. Amen. Amen. In this moment, there's so much going on around the world. We want to be mindful and so we're going to start out praying. I know First Lady's already prayed, but I'm just going to continue to pray. And again, we don't own the rights to this music, but let this worship bless you. There were so many people that died over in the Midwest by, the report says over 20 to 30 tornadoes wreck havoc throughout the night. You never know when your last moment is going to be. That's why your Bible says that the day that you hear his word, to harden not your heart. For in that day, in that moment, you have an opportunity to give your life to God and not to just give it to him momentarily or temporarily, but to give it to him with an impression of lasting a lifetime. It's like a marriage, it's a covenant agreement between you and the Holy Ghost that you pledge your allegiance to him, not a flag or not to a country or to a man, but you pledge your allegiance and your obedience to the Holy Spirit that it would lead you and guide you and to bring you into all truth and righteousness. Father, it is our prayer today that you would meet us at the point of our needs. Lord, so many people are falling by the wayside so many people have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. 
So many people, oh God, are running to and fro here and there, running away from God, not towards him. Lord, not towards you, not towards your throne, not towards your altar. They may be running to lights and fame and gravitating to applause from men, but we know heaven is silent. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we decrease, take the glory that belongs to you as we speak your word today. That you would govern our hearts, O oh God, like a righteous judge. That you would keep us before the very eyelids of your face. That we would be the apple of your eye. That we would repent, O oh God, such as never before. And return to you, O oh God, who is our first love. To return to the place, O oh God, where you saved us to. Return to that place of grace. To return to that safety shadow of, of, of the Almighty. Uh, as long as we're under your wings and your covering, God, we're safe. Father, we trust that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we'll ever ask or think. Father, oh God, please, Lord, please, Lord, send your mercy even the more. Send your strength even the more, God. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Truly, I'm my, I won't say you may have your seats in the building. Thank those for watching. Amen. Your Facebook Live. Amen. Truly, amen. My heart is not grieving, but it's, it's heavy because we are not um, chasing and running after God like we used to. As a collective body, we're running from everything else. This storm happened in the middle of the night, tornado after tornado, amen. And many people didn't have a second chance to get their life together. They didn't have a chance to come to worship. They didn't even have a chance to send up a worship praise. Their life was snatched just like that. And it's so many things going on in the world and your news. Even on last week, we talked about the news of the day and we referred it to the good news, that the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is that that saves souls and delivers men from bondage. But this week, as we fast forward seven days, not only have we found ourselves Amen. Running again, per se. It's everything in the news media is running. It's so many people running out of this and running out of that. There's so many people running away from this and running away from that. On two days ago, there was a shooting at our local Lakeland Mall. People were on live. They were so frantic and they were so scared running away from bullets and chaos. But why are we running now? Uh, let me just set the platform up for this message today. Why are we fearful now? You are in a place where you're supposed to be shopping and having fun. How many know this is not our home? This is only a temporary resting place. And I, when, I read, when I say rest, I'm, I don't mean sitting down or sitting on your laurels or not doing anything. Amen. A resting means it's a place prepared for us to do business, to do kingdom business. And, and it's a lot of things that's going on. And I just want to set the record straight. Somebody say set the record straight. Amen. That we got to get back on track. In school, amen, I was very good at a lot of things. I was very good at ditching the, uh, the guards that would have walkie-talkies and I didn't want them to see me skipping school. I was very good, amen, I called myself talking to females, amen, when I should have been on the track field. I was very good, amen, at a lot of things, amen, but those things were bad. I was pretty good at track. And when I applied myself, amen, to the track field, I did all right. But how many know today we have gotten off track as a people? We are running after celebrities and we have made them our idols and our gods. We're running after position and prestige and 
power, amen, finance. We're running after all those things. And your Bible even says it, they're running to and fro from mischief. Running to mischief. The Bible says that beware of swift feet running to mischief. Fightings all over the land. All kinds of things all over the place. And we have to understand that this is the season to where God is telling us to get back on track. Look to your neighbor one more time and say, get back on track. Here now, amen, we go to the uh, book of Jonah today. We go to the book of Jonah. A very, very fitting scripture. And early in the week, I had a wonderful, wonderful sermon prepared and lined up. And it was talking about digging deep, amen, for treasure. How many know that your Bible tells you that we have this earthen treasure amen we have this uh we there is something buried way down inside each and every last one of us that gives us amen power amen to sustain anything that we go through and i don't know about you but i've been through a whole lot but somebody say i'm not giving up i'm not giving up so here now i want to read the end of the book and then we'll rewind because a lot of times, amen, hallelujah, a lot of times we hear in our news, amen, and I don't even understand this. I wasn't even going to share it, but in the, the rap industry, the R&B and all those things that's in the world, it's not enough that you have chosen to live a life that is not pleasing to God. It's not enough that you've got riches and you've got fame. The devil has it so that he has blinded you so much that now you're after each other and y'all doing the same thing. You're, you're, you're competing against each other in a different world that's not designed for you to win. And so you end up having people shooting one another and snuffing their life out, amen. And therefore they have no chance at living eternity with heaven because you already served the devil for a long time here on earth. And your reward is eternity in hell with the devil. This is not fire and brimstone, but everybody going to heaven. Oh, yeah, everybody going to heaven. There's so many things I'm learning in amen, my religion course. Amen. Different religions believe different ways. Amen. Hindus believe certain things. If you're in a Buddhist, amen, or if you're in Islam or all those religions, they believe certain, certain things. To make it to nirvana, this place of contentment. But I want to say in Christendom, amen, the only religion, somebody say only religion, amen, that one man died so that others could live, amen. Jesus Christ suffered, amen, on a rugged cross, amen. He died and he suffered, amen, a terrible death, a judgment that was not supposed to happen, but because he loved us so, we find ourselves having a chance at everlasting life, amen. Here now in Christendom, the only religion, amen, to where we all go to heaven, oh yeah. And I want to go a step further, everybody going to heaven. But if you stay in the heaven, that's a whole other place. Because there's a great white throne judgment and there is, amen, the judgment seat of Christ. How many know those can't be on earth? They have to be where? They got to be in heaven in the presence of God. Amen. Now you may be getting judged in heaven, but you ain't going to stay there. We got to get back. Somebody say get back on track. Get back on track. Here now. Jonah finally obeys God. Amen. Have you ever ran from God? Come on, yeah, I got some witnesses. Amen. And some folk, amen, if you're on Facebook, you might be running from God right now. Amen. They saw the videos. They, oh, people are so scared. They're frantic. It's on, oh, there was a shooting. Oh, there was a shooting. I'm not making light of it. But how many know when you get thrown in the crucible of an emergency, the real you come out? <laughs> you are vulnerable, amen, to everything. And, and you, 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 you have the audacity to, to film. You got the, enough, enough whatever in your mind to be videotaping yourself while you're running on, on Facebook. 
Instead of getting out there, you, you got to make sure the camera's on. You still got your consciousness, but you've got your consciousness and your fear. You know what's happened? We have left the fear of God. We were at a service this morning. Amen. The pastor was preaching, amen, about the fear of God. The people have forgotten the fear of God. They would rather fear people than fear God. But how many know whether God was the author of the tornado? Watch this. I'm not saying he was. Whether Mother Nature, I don't believe in Mother Nature because all things happen for a reason. But I, I do believe that things happen because of the condition of this earth and this world. How many know sin, amen, call, is a penalty? Amen. Pestilence is in the land. Amen. You want to call COVID something masqueraded by the government, whatever. It's still a pestilence. And the Bible says in the last days, these things were going to happen. So here now, amen, as we get back on track, here's the end of Joan, Jonah's story. He finally obeys God. Then we're going to rewind and talk about why he ran from God in the first place. Amen. Many times we start at the beginning and we go to the end. But I want to read the ending of his story. Here it is, Jonah, the third chapter. If you're there, say amen. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. What is it? A second time. <laughs> Again. He says a second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Meaning, not what you want to do. Hello, not what you want to say, not the remarks, or not the, 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 the what's the word, not the, not the way you want people to respond to you. Go preach what I tell you to preach. And how many know a lot of that's going on today? Pre preachers preaching whatever they want to preach. It says, go bid unto them what I'm telling you. Preach the word that I'm telling you to preach. Amen. It says, so Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. What's symbolic of three days? Jesus being what? In the grave, right? Uh, what's another symbolism of three days? Amen. God, Father, Son, Redemption, Holy Spirit, Regeneration of the Church, the Trinity. Amen. Lazarus was sick. Surely by now, after three days, he should be dead, right? So many, so many um, similarities in the scripture that have to do with three days. Three days is completion. Not only is it completion, but it's reminding us that, amen, it was purpose. It was for purpose. Somebody say it was for purpose. For and Jonah began to enter into this city a day's journey. How is that possible? Three days away, you get there in a day unless you're flying on a plane. And back then they have, you know. Somebody help me. Southwest. They ain't have Spirit. They ain't have Delta. Delta American. American, whatever. They, they ain't have all them airlines. They, they had camels. <laughs> feet. They had feet. The caravan station. They had that, That's what they had. So something got in Jonah that should have been in, in him the first time. Why don't we run like we crazy what the first time? Why do we need a second chance and a third chance and for God to, oh, I was in another accident. Why do we need God to save us over and over and over again until we finally get it? Lord, I'm going to serve you, what, the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. It's our humanness. It's our ability, amen, to think that we don't need God. But how many know you need God every day? Amen. And Jonah began to enter into the city of day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown. There's another 40, another relative scripture to the number 40. Amen. How many times did it rain? For 40 what days? 40 and 40 nights. How, how long was Jesus, amen, fasting? For what? 40 days. This whole scripture has a lot to do with the symbolism of numbers. He says, in 40 days, none of us shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast, put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. That means everybody started serving the Lord. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe on him and covered him with sackcloth, 
and he sat in ashes. Even the king <laughs> had a repentant spirit. Now, how many know when God's judgment starts to reach the earth, oh, then people what? Get in a hurry. They change their mind. And I don't have a problem with, with, with preachers that preach fire and brimstone. I don't. Because how many know it's a lot of hard-headed, stiff-nosed folk, folk that need it? But you ain't got to preach that to me, Lord. I'm coming. I'm coming quick. Yeah, I'm coming quick. I got enough warnings. I got enough beatings across my head. I got enough stripes, amen, and bad experiences. You don't need to what? Remind me anymore about, amen, the transgressors, amen. That, that stuff is hard when you're kicking against the prick. How many know it is time that we get back on track? Amen. Hallelujah. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Who is this talking? The king, right? But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil. This is the power and the authority of a king. Now, you can't tell me that leadership don't have a huge responsibility. People will respond to leadership. Whether they like it or not, when the leader does it, people will respond. And not only the people, but the king said, all your animals, all your servants, all your family going to go on a fast. That's power and authority. But how many know when the king is under the peer pressure of the enemy to not bow, not turn, not repent, not do what is right? How many know that guess what? God has to lift his hand and say I, enough is enough. Here now we got a couple more verses. Amen. Then we're going to rewind to why Nineveh, amen, did not get the message when it should have gotten the message. He said, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yet let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. And if we're in Lakeland and it's across the world, how many know people are dying, not just from the COVID or disease, People are dying left and right, y'all. We saw a, a video of a baby that passed away. And I think on, in the funeral marching line, they had a, a sonic. They had a, a, a person that was in a sonic costume, hedgehog, because the baby apparently loved that video game person. But how many know it doesn't matter if you're young or old, people are dying left and right. Football players are I ended up dying, found in a house, and movie stars, and people that started businesses there, there and, and, and rock stars, they're ending up what? Dead. How many know judgment starts at where? The house of God, but now judgment is not at the house of God any longer. It is what? All over the world. Mm. Different land. Do you, do you not think that in the Midwest that was a form of judgment? Hello, it was. Well, I don't know who caused it. I don't know why, but it's a form of judgment. Why don't tornadoes just be, and I'm sure they do, but it's never reported when tornadoes are in the desert. Because <laughs> there's no death there. But tornadoes leave an inhabitant or uh, an environment to where nothing will be destroyed, but then it finds, it has a route it takes to go and destroy not only houses and, and brick and mortar, but what? People. Hmm. So many things that are running to and fro. You never thought a tornado could run after people. Lord have mercy. Ninth verse. Who can tell? And this is where I get all of my theory from about what I just said. This particular verse. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? Ooh, Jesus. How many know you ain't got enough knowledge to know what God's going to do? You ain't got enough knowledge to know 
why God is mad at that particular region or that particular country or that particular nation or that particular society or group of people. God, amen, and he, he has allowed religions, watch this, to function all over the land so that we could, amen, find out who the real God is. And, and, and this is just me. This is just me. Um, there was this white lady on part of my schooling. It was a video, and she was a Buddhist. She had been in Buddhism for so many years, and she had made her way way up the ladder. And I began to think, how in the world did this particular woman get to be in this particular religion? Whether she was born there or engrafted there or she had a liking to it or something pushed her toward, toward whatever it was. How many know you have, a, you have a lifetime to make a decision on who you're going to serve? And the choice is God tells you clearly, choose what? Ye this day, whom, y'all help me, whom you going to serve? Mm -hmm. So the choice is ours. How many know the choice has been on? Mm -hmm. And people are serving the rock God, the rock and roll God. Elvis served him for a long time. Michael Jackson did too. Prince did too. Whitney Houston did too. How many know that death has no number or age? Amen. It has no particular, amen, clothing that it desires whether or not you die or not. Aren't you tired of people dying without a cause? David went on a battlefield and fought, amen, Goliath. And he began to say, is there not a reason for why we should be fighting this Goliath? He has come up against what? Our God. Have we lost our nerve to evangelize and to go witness to the lost? Hello? I was at my job looking out the, the window and Three seven-day Adventists, young guys, were walking down the street on a mission for their God, whoever their God is. How many know it's time to get back on track? Mm -hmm. It says, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger? And anybody in this world telling you that God don't get mad, they're a liar. And they're probably sent from the devil. And the devil wants you to believe, oh, God is just a God of love. He ain't going to get mad at you. Why not when you rebel and you sin against his word? And you go against the right principles of God's word. Amen. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Why wouldn't God get mad when people are killing people all over the place? But he gave us dominion in this realm, in this land, and it belongs to mankind. And mankind has a choice of how he or she should live. Mm. Here it gets better. He says, that, and that we perish not. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not to them. So God does not what? Destroy mankind. Give me about 10 more minutes. Let's go back to the first chapter of Jonah. And even the first title heading of the first chapter, what does yours say if you got a heading? Jonah's disobedience. Guess what mine says? Jonah runs away. Here now, before we go to the beginning of Jonah's story, you have a decision to make. One, if you're already running for Christ, keep on running. Somebody say, keep on running. Two, amen, there are other people in your circle, amen, in your corner, amen, on your team, amen, on your job, at your church, amen, in the marketplace that are not running for God. How many know it is your responsibility to let them know who you serve? Oh, y'all gonna help me? 
Guess what? How I many? Because we shouldn't be scared Christians. Uh, we shouldn't be. Folk need to know whose side you stand on at your job. Because they shouldn't be able to come and say anything, you know, to you or in your atmosphere. They should have some type of respect and loyalty to your God and your beliefs. If they're truly your friend. But I'm not saying that you, you ought to be so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good either. Amen. Can't be walking around your job with your nose stuck up and say, oh, holy am I. You got to be relatable to people. People got to know, look, I can go talk to them because they're the most sane person at this job. <laughs> Everybody else going crazy. No, but that Christian, amen, he got his, she got his head on straight. Amen. Here now, the beginning of Jonah's story it says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, and it didn't say the first time because the writer don't want us to know it's going to be a second time. <laughs> the writer wants us to know and believe that this time, the first time, Jonah what? Going to do what is right. How many know God does not reveal everything to us, amen, at the beginning of our trial? Amen. Oh, he takes us baby steps. Amen. I thank God for confirmation. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise for confirmation. Amen. If you're going to do something or, or buy something, amen, or set your eyes on something, you better pray about it first. Because he'll allow some things to happen. He'll allow you to see some things. Some things will break down and won't go right. Why? Because he wants you to be blessed and not cursed. Mm -hmm. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now God is a God that is omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere where at the same time. There's never a place God is. He, he exists in the eternal now. He existed before time. He exists in eternity. So there's never a place that God is absent from being there. God can choose to leave a place. Amen. But God still is, is there. How many know that? Amen. The Bible says that, amen, he'll come and sit down and he'll dwell with you. But how many know when Jesus leaves, you won't even know he's gone? <laughs> You'll still be conducting service thinking that the Holy Ghost is enjoying your worship. Uh, but he has exited the building. <laughs> he has checked out, amen, got his cloak and everything. Amen. He is gone, amen, and he is on his Holy Ghost vehicle, and he has left your premises. But we don't know it because we're doing our own thing. Jonah wants to go do his own thing. Amen. It says his wicked, the wickedness has come up. Mm. Come up. Now, we, 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 we don't really have to exegete this. And you can take this literal, figuratively, however you want to take it. But look at the text. That means God didn't have enough. Hello. <laughs> God didn't. How many know God will let us do foolishness and wickedness for so long? Amen. He will. For so long. And guess what? Watch this. And I don't mean to. I don't mean to make this a hurtful situation for anybody. But sometimes God will allow a thing because you did nothing. God will allow things to happen around you because you didn't do anything around you. Think about it. Pause for a minute. Why is this chaos in my house? Well, what did you do to prevent the chaos? Video shooting some months ago. Cops come up and cops get blamed all the time. But there were things happening before the cops arrived and nobody there did anything to stop the chaos. So when things happen that's more chaotic than it was how many know God allows things to happen because you did nothing to stop it God has given us what power to what tread upon serpents and scorpions and your Bible says what nothing by any means shall harm you what verse he said, but Jonah rose up 
to flee. Wow. He went to Tarsha and he fleed from the presence of the Lord. Now this is crazy. And I didn't know I was going to be locked into the text like I am now, but y'all just walk with me before we get to the boat. How can you flee from the presence of the Lord if he's everywhere? Adam, where are you? You used to meet me at the meeting place when the dew was fresh on the grass because you've been dabbling in sin. You don't even recognize what time it is. And Eve, she's been dabbling too. And neither one of y'all can understand or recognize that you're late. Lord have mercy. Mm, boy, I feel the whole, anybody else feel that spirit in here? You are late. Because there's a set time to meet God. Hallelujah. And if you late with meeting God, hallelujah, your time going to be up. Hallelujah. They might as well pull on your lifeline, on your heart, because you are late with God. How many times you going to keep being late to work with God? Yes, you're on assignment. Yes, this is your job to be a Christian. Yes, it is. Oh, I didn't sign up for it. Well, what other alternative do you have? I don't know about y'all, but I got tired of being late. With my appointments with God. Now hallelujah. Mm, I want to bless him so hallelujah. That Lord I, if I got to get there early hallelujah. That's when you know you're on time. How many know on your job when you get there. Amen 15 minutes early. That means you're really on time. So he decided. He rose up. To flee from the presence of God, of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa. This is interesting, First Lady, because how does Jonah not know that God is not in Joppa? <laughs> when you know a certain region, you think, amen, that you can just do it. You think you've got time. Oh, I, I can go into the mall and shop. Oh, this is a beautiful clothing. This is pop, 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 folk running when guns break out. How many know that it is time out to go window shopping? It's time to go soul searching. It is time out for us to think that we got all the time. How many know you ain't got much time? Oh, well, time is what winding up, the Bible says. You ain't got much time. Look to your neighbor and say, you ain't got much time. Those that's watching today, you don't have much time. And I know the old folk used to say, come on, baby, come on. You better come on into the ark. It's going to rain. Guess what? They're still saying it. And now the younger folk that got saved through that generation, now we saying it. How many know you ain't got much time? Mm-hmm. Woo! Don't you know? Thank you, Holy Ghost, because the world will wage you for your time. The world will bargain for your time like a poker table, Brother Tom. Amen. And the chips are down. Hallelujah. And how many know, amen, depending on which, amen, thing you land on, amen, you'll be, amen, you'll be suspect to want to keep on gambling. Hallelujah. Because it'll start getting good to you. I'm talking about the far country, y'all. But how many know ain't nothing in the far country worth my salvation? Oh, yes, ain't nothing in the far country worth me losing an eternity. It's not even worth me losing a meeting with God. Amen. Mm, because there's so much he wants to give you. And I ain't talking about stuff, but I'm just talking about stuff that will, will last. Let me, let me finish because I know we got to close. It says, amen, and so he paid the fare. How are you going to pay? 
to go another way? How are you just going to choose to not love God? You cheated on God. Anybody catching this text? You, how long have you been cheating on God? If you cheat on God, hey amen, you're probably cheating on everything else in your life. If anything, you're going to be real with, at least be real with God. God, he'll accept your foolery for a little while. Isn't that what the Bible says? The Bible says when God had enough, the wickedness had come up to him. So he'll, he'll tolerate it for a little while. Hallelujah. So he freed, he paid the fare thereof and went down. Give me five minutes. He went down into it to go with them unto Tasha from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the Lord sent out a great wind. Woo. Now watch this now. And I'm not, I'm not conveying the message. I didn't even know I was going to get to this part. But who sent out the great wind on the sea? The Lord did. Now I'm not saying that them people in the Midwest were sinners or not saved. I don't, I don't know. That is not my judgment call. But I'm saying here we know that God controls what? Everything. So you can surmise the text and surmise the reality of storms and calamities, hurricanes, amen. But how many know that, amen, it's, it, it, it's, it's wrong, it's bad to be in the wrong place. Hello? And guess what? If, if they say the storm coming your way, somebody, somebody say, you might want to leave. How many know that we've gotten them reports? In Florida, we've gotten them. And, and we've seen and they say, well, buckle down. It may not be too much. And so we buckle down. But how many know if they say it's directly going to hit your house, it might be time to leave. Come on, y'all. It might be time to just say we need to sit down, assess the situation. Amen. Even if we got to find a bunker house or somewhere. Amen. How many know you better use wisdom? Not the wisdom of this world or age, but the wisdom of the Lord and from the Lord. People may be worldly wise, but they ain't got no spiritual discernment whatsoever. Don't matter how long you've been living in this world, if the Lord, the baby, God will give a baby discernment. Hello? He'll give a donkey discernment. Hello? Why you keep hitting me? I've been with you. I'm your only rider that you've never had. Oh, let me finish. Hallelujah. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. There was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. Remember, I talked to you about this religion course I'm in and all these gods that they have. God don't care about you having different gods. Ultimately, he wants you to come to him, but he'll let you serve whoever you want to serve. He'll let you go. He'll let you go and live out your life trying to find him. Because sooner or later you're going to run into the right one. That'll lead you to God. Here it is. Watch this. We're almost done. It says, then the mariners went afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the, the wares and, and were in the ship into the sea to lighten it. They was throwing stuff overboard to lighten the load. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and he was fast asleep. <laughs> he was fast asleep. Wow. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Slacking and not being about kingdom work. That's what's going on in today's world. People are sleeping. And they're not doing kingdom work. They may be working, but they ain't doing kingdom work. So if you ain't doing kingdom work, you sleeping. I don't care if you got a building, if it ain't about the kingdom of Jesus Christ, you sleeping. And the taskmaster, the captain of the ship called him what? Oh, sleeper. Said, wake up, arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us. That we perish not. Because all them other jokers, they God was sleeping too. But it was something about Jonah 
that the leader knew, hallelujah, about him when he got on board, amen, there's something different about you than everybody else. Uh, I feel like preaching, but we ain't got time. <laughs> How many know that people know when the Holy Ghost enter the room? They know that the anointing is on your life, amen, and, and you ain't got no other choice but to, to walk in the anointing that you carry. All of our children are anointed. And I pronounce that they start walking in the anointing that they carry. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I kudos. And it's not to single out the other two that, amen, our daughters, amen. But Caleb is a good son. You, see, you, you better help me say amen. <laughs> amen. Somebody say amen. First lady. Yeah. <laughs> He about to turn 18. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. But I thank God and I, I thank God for his favor on his life. He's a good son. And how many know if you got good children, good family, you ought to appreciate them. Tell them. Oh, Lord have mercy. You're a good wife. You're a good husband. You're a good father. You're a good daughter. Amen. You're a good deacon. You're a good sister. Hallelujah. We told Deke De De that today. You're a good deacon. Hallelujah. Thank you for your service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that, amen, the leader and the authority of the ship, amen, he knew of something different about, hallelujah. When there's something different about you, you won't fit in with everybody. And you got to be comfortable within your own skin to know I'm different. I stand out, amen. I stand out because God got his hand on my life. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You ain't supposed to fit in everybody's circle. Hallelujah. They supposed to talk about you. Jesus didn't fit in with everybody. You worried about peer pressure. You better worry about Holy Ghost pressure. Hallelujah. He calls you out from amongst foolishness to keep you covered. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. I had another son that was a good son. He got out of here early. And only if he would have realized that God had an anointing on his life because he didn't fit in with everybody. There's one thing I do know about his sacrifice with his life is that he did not fear and he did believe God. And so with that, I give God praise because we live now with the legacy of knowing, amen, all is not lost, amen. Here now, amen, as we move this message to a close, worship. He, the leader, the taskmaster of the boat, shipmaster, he came, amen, he said that your God, he can make all this stop. He says, and they said, everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know who brought this evil on us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. <laughs> we all knew it. Then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. So here now we understand that, amen, evil lands on people. It could be because of one person. Mm -hmm. If you're around the wrong people, you need to get with the right people. Amen. Because sin is serious. That's a message. That's a message about it. sin is serious. Sin has consequences. Sin has devastating results. Hallelujah. That's why you can't run with everybody. That's why you can't hop in everybody's vehicle. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why, oh, we're going, we're going. I'm just riding in the back. You better make sure they ain't drinking, they ain't hello, drugging. Because they're in control of the wheel, not you. You're a passenger. Amen. Of confusion. 
You might have to say, let me out. No, I'll walk. I'll get there. I'll meet y'all there. Because I can't go the way y'all going. Y'all hear me? Don't let your family just get in vehicles with people that you don't know or you don't trust. That's what Jonah did. He got into a boat. He had left the presence of God thinking that he could hide and go to sleep. But how many know when you wake up, them problems are still there? And we don't own the rights to this music. But in closing, watch this, it says. Then they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause is this evil upon us? What is thine occupation? <laughs> he said, what is your job? Didn't I tell you earlier that being a Christian is a job? Yes, it is a job. It's not just a behavior or a way of life or a new change of lifestyle. It is your job to be a good Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, what is your occupation and whence cometh thou? What is thy country? Where did you come from? Where is your people? What is your background? Hmm. And what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord. <laughs> the God of heaven, which have made the sea and the dry land. Boy, that's something to shout about. So he, re he realizes and he recognizes that I can't run from God no more. You called into question my witness. Hallelujah. Woo. You made me reassess my position for being on the boat anyway. Hallelujah. You brought it back to my remembrance, my attention. Hallelujah. Now my spirit is convicted. Don't you be scared about convicted people's spirits. Do y'all hear me? Wrong is wrong. And guess what? Judgment going to start with you if you don't tell them wrong is wrong. He said, you, ain't even, you don't even belong here. Then there were the men exceedingly afraid. I'm done. Everybody standing. And he said unto them, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. <laughs> wow. Then said they unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Said unto them, Take me up, cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord. Here it is now. It took us a while to get to this hill, but here are other people with other gods. They have temporarily switched teams. <laughs> Today is football day. They have temporarily been on the bandwagon with their gods, but look now, something has happened. We got to go with, amen, America's team. They got to go with the God of the Hebrews. Somebody say Elohim is his name. We don't own the rights to this music again. So watch this. What verse am I at? The 14 says, he said, we beseech thee. Oh Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not upon innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, have done it as it pleased thee. So they took Jonah, cast him over the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and they made vows. Do y'all see that? These men came to God because of Jonah's disobedience 
But how many know that God works all things what together for his good? Because he was on the ship, they got to know the real God. And they made vows, gave sacrifice. And guess what? Once that happened once, you don't need to do nothing else for me to know that God is real. <laughs> now the Lord had prepared. Watch this. I'm done. Great fish to swallow up Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days. That's that number again. Three days and three nights. How many know Jonah is a type of Christ? Y'all know that, right? Jonah is a type of Christ. So here now, in, conclusion, in conclusion and closing, something that I, I want to just bring out and give me 30 seconds. Jonah was thrown overboard. But guess what? Jonah didn't know God was going to take care of him, did he? <laughs> But the Lord had what? Prepared a fish. How many know that the Lord would prepare a table where? In the presence of our enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you to life. We love you to life. We thank you, O oh God, for our beginning and our ending, helping us getting back on track. Lord, we love you. We're so thankful that you love us. Thankful for a second chance. Thank you, O oh God that you are everlasting to everlasting. Thank you for being the Prince of Peace, the Lord of all lords. Lord, this is our prayer to you today, that you bless people under the sound of my voice, those that's in the building, those that have been watching. We pray a special blessing on those families in the Midwest, oh God, that you would buffet the pain. Father, give them rest and resolve. Lord, this is our prayer. Let us run to you and never away from you. Let us be on time at our job, and that is serving you and living a life that you will be pleased with. In Jesus' name, amen.